all year has been one per night somewhere. No matter how packed. But something's going on here that God is extending his voice in that area. Shake somebody nicely and tell them, I really want you to get a miracle by mid-March. Tell them that's next week in case you didn't know, right? I'm going to give some bullet point talk because y'all told me I could teach and I didn't have to yell because Sunday I didn't and we had great time. 2 Samuel 4 verse 4. Then you can be seated as I go to 2 Samuel chapter 9. Uh Uh-oh. Second Samuel 4 verse 4 only. You don't have to stand, man. No. No, you really don't. Then 2 Samuel chapter 9, you, you can be seated on. Uh, let me read it, and please, some of you push me. My 100 will not get quiet. You are holding me down. If you give a prophet a glass of water. So picture what you get if you hold them down. Hold me down. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. No, my hundred didn't talk, they out. He was five years old like sister over there. When the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel and his nurse, his caretaker, Took him up and fled. Some of y'all think you know my sermon. You don't know my message. (laughs) And it came to pass as she made haste to flee. That he fell. Touch the mind and tell him I've fallen before also. I want you to know that now. Oh look at the default. Not me. Oh yeah. It's been a while. I didn't ask you how long. You fell before didn't you? And became lame. And here's the unfortunate part for ten folk out of the hundred who will talk loud so I can get strength. Because I get strength when you talk. Not when, this is not a monologue. This is a dialogue. But the unfortunate thing is what I'm going to say now for the 30 folk who will take it personal. I was not hiding that I have fallen before. But what I'm upset about, or should I say concerned about, for one person who will catch this, is they knew my name before I got back up. You know, this is... Why are people in your business and you're not known yet? Uh Uh-oh. Or maybe I should say it like this for the hundred louder screamers. You got known because of your fall. I did. Be seated. There are some folk that knew more negative about you than they ever knew the truth. I see some self-righteous folk in here tonight. just wish just for four people that God would have withheld my name where's my 100 forget the front I'm always looking no 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 don't no no I need the truth I just wish that God would have just withheld my name But the Lord told me to tell my talkers, your name is not who you are. Your name is how people identify you. (laughs) 
In 2 Samuel chapter 9, just turn there. Beginning, y'all trying to make me go there, at verse 5. When you have it, say amen. amen. Then King David sent, I need help, and fetched him out of the house of nature, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. We're going to go verse by verse so I can get there. But eight of y'all out of the hundred that's going to help me preach, I want you to tell your neighbor you're here because God fetched you. Tell them he's about to pull you out of something and take you to a place you've never been before. And then tell them, regardless of what your name is. I do want to go in and out of the text and not be proper. So let me deviate and go here for my same talker. Because I'm looking to identify consistent talkers. There are some folk with big names. We've been talking about big all Sunday. That's going to be shocked when they see you at their table. They dogged your name, but they can't stop you from getting to the table. Your name is going to be respected more than theirs. And the people that mean you harm. They really want to see you fail in a bad way. The reason why I'm going ahead of myself for the hundred talkers, they're going to have to respect your name is because of who's inviting you to the table. You're not their guest. You're somebody else's guest. folk trying to stop some of us we all just realize for my talkers that all they can do is run their mouth they ain't got no table I'm fighting to be a friend of somebody they ain't got no table there's not a place you can help me get in life you're only important and very known because you keep mentioning my name. Look how quiet it got now. Bloggers only have power because they write about people with power that other folk want to hear about. Verse 6. Come on, y'all, push me. We got to go. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, who came unto David, uh, he, 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 he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. Verse 6 has this in it for those who are with me. You are not going to get to that place where you have influence, power, and a lot of money. Until you have served even those who hate you. The qualification is, I'm there when everybody needs me. But ain't nobody there when I need them. Hmm? The word servant in its et et etymology is deeper than being there for folk carrying briefcase pouring the water that is serving though at a table you have a server they do your water they lay your place give your black or white you know handkerchief or whatever y'all need cloth but here go the truth of what the word servant means 
in that Hebrew. And if one person jump, may you be blessed forever. It means to serve to the point of abuse. And some of y'all can't go that far. Ain't nobody gonna disrespect me. Negro, shut up and pick the doggone table up. Because one day when you get to your place of power, somebody's going to think your orders are abusive. Nobody for my talkers loves taking orders except a servant. The table attendant's job is to say, may I take your order? Some of you want to give orders. I want all you up at 3 a.m. for prayer. Negro, you don't get up at 3 a.m. for prayer. Don't ask from people what you won't give yourself. Don't tell folks shout and you ain't a shouter. Don't tell folks scream and you ain't a screamer. Only time you get excited is when you touch this crack. You got to be a praiser when no mic is in your hand. This is becoming a joint. You give quiet people in church a mic and they sing. Now they want to preach. I was talking to God. You ain't talked the whole service. When you was talking to God. Relationship, when it's full of love, should be exemplified in public. If you can hug your girl in public and kiss her in public and say you my boo in public, how you love God and keep him private? When I think of the... It's going to get ugly in a minute. The love you have for God should be displayed, especially in his house. You don't come as a guest in my house and not talk to me. You got to go. Your silence just ended your stay. All of you that have been there when people needed you doing things for them that they don't know it was difficult because you don't look like the hell you've been through and you giving them a hundred but now you need 500 you've been there trying to ease the burdens of others while you going under yourself God says I got an invitation for you y'all oh yeah I'm about to drop your name in somebody's spirit and they gonna RSVP you and tell you you've been on my heart meet me at so and so place And for Lamasukatam, and for the 12 of you that are sincerely hearing the word and you're excited about it, God says this RSVP is mid March. He said, You don't even qualify to sit with this group of people. You don't have their expertise, you don't have their vocabulary, you don't have their degrees. But God said the way I'm going to get you there and get you blessed is from these two words. Eight folk catch you get happy, I'm going to send you there because I'm about to teach you some table manners. Y'all need to, I'm going to get some table manners. Verse 8, stay with me babies, you ain't got to stand unless you feel it. Y'all stood for a whole hour Sunday, don't scare me today. Verse 8 says, for those that are into the text, no I got it, verse 7. And David said unto him, fear not, I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's state, sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, I need to preach this, and thou shalt eat bread, y'all ain't reading it, at my table once. So the Lord told me, Bishop Gay, to tell 50 folk to get happy on this and then sit down as if you're rich. He said, once I start your season, it doesn't end. The 
these folk don't preach seasons right seasons last for no no don't talk to me continually means no stop it stops when you stop showing up to the table I need whatever God's about to give you and I to last and for one screamer who would jump for me, I wanted to last as long as the hell I went through last. I thought it was never gonna stop. She'll eat bread at my table. Oh, 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 oh. I left out one other thing. He says, I will show thee kindness for thy father Jonathan's sake, and I shall restore to you all that belongs to you since your father Saul. Which means David is saying to Mephibosheth what I'm going to say to only eight of you. Not all of you, because some of you standing, but you ain't talking. But to those who are really digesting this, he basically tells him, I'm about to give you everything none of your relatives was able to keep. He said, I'm going to give you what Saul missed out on. I'm going to give you what Jonathan missed out on. As a matter of fact, you're about to be the most successful person of your family. And in your group. And in your church. Now, if you know it's you, the way you know is, your name is being talked about in a negative way. Some folk did not study arithmetic. They never got to pre-calc, calc, trigonometry. I'm pretty good in math and psychology. History, I'm a little shaky in. Because I don't believe what some of them say. After I found out that Christopher Columbus did not discover the world, I was through. Look at folk, he didn't see, you should be through too. When I found out that it was a black man, I got mad. Amerigo Vespusque is where we get America from but listen to this if they study basic algebra you will jump on this for yourself all of you that a lot of people are saying negative things about and making you look like something you're not and every time you try to fix it you look like a liar stop wasting your time catch this and jump for yourself and then sit in algebra two negatives equal a positive and I'm all I am today because of all the stuff you said yesterday, right? And some of that stuff decided, this person don't deserve all this hell. What kind of positive life can we give them after all this? I think I'm boring y'all now. Because I ain't heard from nobody over there. They're a little distracted. Verse 8, he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou should have looked upon such a dead dog am I? Which means Mephibosheth has told David, why would you bless me in the condition that I'm in? David says to him, basically for my three, four, five, eight talkers, I'm blessing you not because of how you look, because if I had to look at you, I wouldn't bless you. He said, but I can bless you because when God chose me, they didn't like the way I looked either. Oh, y'all, God showed me your heart. And not just that, I'm not blessing you because of my relationship with you. I'm blessing you because of my relationship with your dad. I want to tell my eight people, I'm stuck on eight until I feel the numbers growing. I want to tell my eight people. Some of you didn't die that should have died. Some of us know what we did. We should have HIV, cancer, been in jail. But I'm going to tell you, the reason why you're still alive is not because of what most preachers tell you. I was born for this. God had already predestined me. I believe in all that preaching too. But I've come to my senses that I've gotten older that that ain't the reason why. Because he got folk who could do you better than you. But let me tell you this. He said, the reason why we didn't die and didn't catch AIDS or die or got away and got out of jail and got a better life was this one reason from the text for one screamer. Because uh, your grandmama or somebody prayed for you and made a covenant, right? Father, this child right here will be used for your glory. He's blessing you to somebody else that's already gone. Somebody. 
somebody prayed for me. Y'all playing. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. Ah, Lord. I'm so glad they prayed. Sean, I'm so glad they prayed for me. Thank you, whoever you were that threw my name in the hat. Verse 9, 10, 11, 12, I'm about to close this and go to my points, but I hope y'all with me. Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I've given you unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to the house. Verse 10, thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and now thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy master's son may have to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat, y'all men, always at my table. And then it lets us know Ziba, the servant, had 15 sons, 20 servants. And now what has happened is, just for those who like quick history talk, that Ziba was living off of the name of Mephibosheth. Because Mephibosheth was lame on his feet and couldn't do nothing. But Ziba, who knew his daddy, mastered living off of another person's name and stuff. So when David finds out that Ziba knows Mephibosheth and finds out that he's supposed to work for him, he tells him from this day forward, you and your whole family going to put in some work. Oh yeah, those who meant you for evil, they're going to go from enemies to employees. Y'all ain't... Oh, y'all mighty quiet, right? He said, y'all are going to do the job you were supposed to do. And that was take care of him, not mooch and try to become him. So he said, you got all these kids. And you got 20 servants and 15 children. That means for one screamer, Mephibosheth got 35 employees. They are his enemies. Can I prematurely do this, Bishop Martin, even though this is not systematic theology yet? Uh, 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 can I just say that when most folk read Psalm 23, they thought David was writing something about himself. But when you track Psalm 23, the character he's writing about is Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is in the valley of the shadow of death called Lodibar. And it's Mephibosheth, for one screamer, that David is preparing a table for in the presence. Oh, y'all don't want to get of his enemy. And every time you pray, Lord, kill my enemy, make a move, you delay your own party. Because he don't do it in the absence of your enemies. Y'all, they must be present. For one screamer over here, one over here will catch this. Because it's your outcome that will determine your new income. You're going to get paid for every person that treated you wrong. And you're going to get paid enough to hire some of them. You want to be on my board. He always allows people that mistreat you to get financially blessed first. Let's stay there until you let it sink in. You too concerned about, Lord, why are you blessing them? Why are they getting money? You know they ain't real. You're not jealous, but you're like, what's the deal, Lord? You know how they mistreat me and yet they look right about me. But them folk, God said, get your attention off them. Pray that I give them more money. Pray that I give them more cars. Why should I do that? He said, for this one reason, for 10 folk who want to learn math, kingdom, arithmetic, the wealth of the wicked. Therefore, they must succeed before you do. I should be preaching over here because y'all been standing. It's... Your real money is not in the job you're doing. It's in the person that made you their job. They 
will not be happy until you fail. They will not. Some of you were so anointed. I don't want to preach because I'm deviating now and I'm taking the bypass. But I'm saying this, I guess, for 50 people who's listening. But some of you are a mystery to your enemies. Because some of the stuff they said you did, you did it. And you admitted it. And still got a seat at the table. Then you got your haters. I'll never let them preach in my church. I don't need to preach at your church. You don't even have a church yet. You got some folk canceling you out of their future. They ain't even got a future yet. If I had a church that wouldn't come to mind, you don't have one. If I had a car that wouldn't be in my front seat, you don't have one. Two verses, but I need y'all to push me because y'all have been making me think I'm saying something. And I need that as I get a little older. Verse 11, then said Ziba unto the king, according to all thy word, my lord, the king hath commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, I wish I had helped, said the king, this is the third time, he shall, y'all not there, eat at my table, uh uh-oh, as one of the king's sons. Which means now it's personal to talk about him is to talk about me. Uh oh. God, for ten folk talking, has put some of you in the place this year that the folk that used to talk negative about you, they got away with it because you weren't close. Now you're closer to God than ever. God said, let them try it now. God said, the last time they did it for talkers, I let you outlive it. When they do it this time, I won't let them live. Because now, you're not just a guest. You're my son. You're my son. You ain't no guest. You don't suffer too much to still be a guest. I got 20 minutes left in me, but y'all better get it out of me while you can. Because between now and March 17th, you've got reservations. Everything paid for. All right, I'll talk to the everything paid for. How you get here in the limo? Who was it? I don't know. What you eat? Whatever I wanted. How much you paid? Zero. Where you live? Over there. How you get in there? Don't worry about it. You know. You don't have to explain to enemies. You ever want to kill an enemy? Succeed. Would you touch somebody that's not your enemy and tell them success is all over here now? Mm. Verse 12, y'all got to talk because I'm a boy. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. Some say Micah. And all dwelled in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. Verse 13 says, but Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. For he did eat, y'all ain't continually, some of y'all weren't reading it, at the king's table. Here goes the part that I'm going to get back to and then holler. And was still laying... On his feet. I haven't even changed yet. And I got my seat. Now Bishop Gabe, before I go too far. Because there's a such thing as taking the text too far. Let me say this for those over there, because those over there, they're standing, but they're not talking as loud. Those right there, they're a little weak in their existence. Those over there, they're trying to get it. But capture this and then get excited. As messed up as this boy's, and I'm going to my text, walk was. Bishop Robinson, as messed up 
as his feet was, as messed up as his self-esteem was, as messed up as he was with no money living at the bottom of the bottom, with this handicap and all, if one person catches I'm good, somebody still loved him enough to have his baby. Hold on! God is sending people that's going to take you just as you are. Don't wait till I change to start liking me. Like me while I'm in transition. I like this new you. I don't like you. My new you don't like some of you. I needed you to like me when I was... Oh, they don't want no time. I don't want you to start liking me after I walk right. I needed you. Some woman in the text, I read it quick so you didn't catch it, had his baby. She found, for one person who would talk, his walk to be cute. Uh, I need somebody who when they talk to me, I feel like I don't have a handicap. Oh, y'all, my, I don't want you to remind me of what I did yesterday. I want you to give me hope to make it to tomorrow. I don't want you to just be staring at it. where my problem is you ain't got to zoom in on it I need someone in my life even with these 25 minutes but y'all gonna get happy to zoom in on my strengths not my weaknesses that's what's wrong with church folk they sit at a table one person saying how anointed you are the other four coming with yeah but you know what I heard listen I didn't ask you. All right, I'll leave it alone. Because now some folk ain't talking and y'all do know I know you handicapped, don't you? There's some I've been a crutch for. Get under me. Don't you ever forget. Don't you ever look at other folk like, why they running and jumping? Ask yourself how you got out of something. And if you answer right for three loud screamers, it'll be the truth. Because you sure didn't just walk out of it. Oh, you didn't just, I'm out of here. You got out of the thing that should have killed you for the loudest screamer because God sent an invitation. And gave it to death. Oh, y'all don't want me to. You should. God. God sent. Catch this Bishop Martin and didn't tell me whether it makes sense. Death should have killed some of us. Got all the evidence. For some pictures, texts. People, don't sit up in here like you don't know. We're in a dangerous day now. You can't hide from sin at all. Right? And then death already knew it's your time to die because the wages of sin. Oh, y'all here. So every time you fall, death get closer. You fall, death get closer. Oh, y'all here. You sin, death get closer. And for those who are supposed to be the anointed ones, it takes giant steps. I want to get them. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. And it get closer. And it get closer. Lord Jesus. But if one person get this and jump, we are there. But then death, when he gets ready to kill somebody, still needs permission from God. And then God says to death, hey, you got the right to kill him. Go ahead. But I need you to read this. Death takes the letter, opens it up in front of God, and says, Brian Martin is to come to the table. Death be like, that's what I had on my list. He said, but he's on my list now. Y'all are, and once you're a guest on God's list, every other list... Don't even.
About to bring it in. Jamal, Bishop, Pastor, Doctor, somebody, now that you're back, I need to talk to you. Somebody married Mephibosheth. Some girl had his baby. <laughs> wow. Which then means for one folk who would jump and act like you're rich, God says, I'm giving you what you need even while you're still messed up. I'm not going to even wait. Uh oh, y'all. I'm not going to even fix it. Because some of you want to be delivered, but addictions ain't easy to break. All right, I'm going to leave that alone too. And God said, I'm going to bless some of you because you got a desire. But right now, he said, tell you this, I hope one person run for me. He said, I'm not blessing you according to your walk right now. I'm going to bless you according to your manners. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. The topic of the sermon for my 10 member church, I had, uh, I, well, I started with 100, then they lied, and I ended up with eight. Do the math. But the topic is from God to a few of you who will praise Him if you know it's you when I give the topic because it's prophetic. You must believe it, get excited, and then you'll get your letter. The topic of the sermon is from God to a, to a few of you, pull up a chair. Have you ever just walked in somewhere that you ain't supposed to have an RSVP seat, but because the person that's featured knows you? They basically say, my friend is here, and that means treat them as you would treat me. All right, I'm going to read and let you go like I did Sunday. I'm going to read it just like this. Lord, help 200 people to catch it because we're about to fly. I want to take a different approach to this text. No, no, don't die out. And want to simply defend and strengthen those whose life isn't going the way you may need it to. Because of your unusual walk. No, that's not eight of them. Your walk at this time doesn't match anything you're saying. Even though what you're saying you mean but can't do at this time. Oh, y'all didn't catch you mean I'm stopping I'm through but it happens again you weren't lying you made that decision but something y'all don't hear me was too strong for your present walk and some folk think you're a liar and a hypocrite because your walk don't match your talk women help me because my brothers done left me don't y'all lie either. Have you ever said that you were through with one of us and meant it? And all your girls heard you and then you confused them because next month. And it's all kind of sorry excuses. Well, we had a talk and I understand them better. Even that side done ducked the head. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason why you took some of us bums back. The only reason why. Oh, look at these folk trying to get swag. You took some of us bums back, sisters, and hope you jump for yourself. Is because you didn't know you, you were going to be invited to a better table. Now look at the men, you're giving them too much power, Hall. No! No! You don't think nothing better is waiting on you. See, some of you are stuck at a table because you love who's at the table. But you're not at the right table to be elevated until there's more enemies than friends. Uh oh, it just, 
he prepares tables only in the presence of enemies. Do I have my last few minutes left for y'all? Bishop Martin, help me because I'm about to bring it on in. I'm just going to stop abruptly, but 34 got to catch this. You are the way you are. All right, yeah, I am. Because of something, hear this, you were dragged into, not willingly walked into. See, I like heads, but I can't hear them, so you got to talk to me. Because some of y'all be like... story of Mephibosheth. I'm sure you preached it. You, you, ever, you ever preached it? I'm sure you have. When I was a kid, 23, I preached drop zone. You know, I preached all kind of sermons in my youth that excited people. But when I read this story today and last week, yesterday we sat and ate dinner, the Holy Ghost hit me. I got three things I need to say, and y'all got to push me as if you want to hear them. Even the men saying go. Number one, Bishop and brothers, he was not really dropped. It said he fell. Look at folks. It didn't even blame the nurse directly. It says, while running for her life, he fell. I'm going to say it again because, because Reverend Kevin didn't talk to me. I said... Because I'm not going to, I told you I want to defend a certain group of people, but you don't want to be defended. And that is, even though you played a role in your falling, you were dragged into this. You didn't even know the person they were talking about, but they said, what you think? Uh, what would you do if it were you? You shouldn't even got into that conversation. Because the truth is just like the nurse for one screaming man. When the truth get out, they're going to let you fall, not them. They're going to run and say, you said it. They don't know how close I am to even closing. I'm going to come over here because y'all left me. He's five. He's five years old. She's protecting him. They are running from the assailants. She cannot run holding a five-year-old. When she grabs him, he's probably, y'all gonna miss it, getting too heavy for the escape. Oh. See, all you hoopers got to learn to be helpers at times too, right? <laughs> no, I, no, no, Bishop Mark can preach. I see a lot of baby hoopers out here on YouTube. Ah, oh, Lord, but you got to be saying something, right? Because right now this teaching boring you. But if I start, and the Lord, there we go. Who's he? Right now, for two folk who would jump, we don't need no more sermons nor series. We need solutions. We done heard all the sermons. Preach something that'll help me walk right. Oh, I know what you want. He was getting too heavy for the escape. So she does what any mother or woman would do. She drops him, not drop, but releases him from her carrying. He's on his feet. She's got his hand. She starts dragging him. Oh, y'all quiet. And in dragging him, I wish I had folk, his feet got messed up. Y'all, 
No, no, he didn't hurt his knees or his hip or his joint or his back. It only affected his feet. Y'all ain't talking. Which meant the feet is where the problem. And you don't get dropped from this low to at five years old and break your feet. Dragged him and didn't stop. And when she finally stopped, his ankles were broke. That's why the scripture focuses on not his legs. It says the problem is only in his feet. That's because for the screamer who wants to be deaf free with me, it's an adult running at adult speed and a child can't keep up. Oh, hold on. Oh, y'all quiet now. Some of these folk dropped you simply because you couldn't keep up at the time. she knew this second point then the third point is where we transition second point for the louder preachers and screamers and folk who want to be blessed people who dropped you or dragged you they will regret it for one reason ask me why because she didn't know it because she was right now too too afraid of death that when she dropped him she dropped her money this is the potential king you babysitting royalty Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me right now. And when certain folk dropped you, they dropped their success right there. Ooh. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul. His DNA is royalty. She was getting paid, miss this, for taking care of him. Her job was for the talkers to protect whose necks. Which means everybody that's next on God's agenda are the people whose walk ain't really perfect. Y'all understand? And people looking at what you do but never ask you what made you turn out like that. Uh oh, I got to go over here. You know I love you but I got to go where my talk is. Here goes the third thing, Dr. Brian. If it makes sense, then just throw a high five to your big brother. And that is, regardless of what happened in, and he's lame, the scripture keeps saying it like this for anybody who will run. He's lame on his feet. He ain't off his feet. Y'all don't hear me. He, I, I'm, I'm, I, I may not walk like you, but I'm still where you at, ain't I? Y'all ain't I may not dress like you, but I'm preaching right after you. I may not. He didn't have a doctor, young man. A doctor didn't reconnect his ankles. No pins, no surgery. He self-healed, but his feet never healed properly. And some folk want to judge you, but you weren't there when I had to go through this by myself. Oh, y'all don't hear. And even though I don't walk like you, I'm still on my feet. Oh, y'all I'm real quiet now. Therefore, he does not have a perfect walk. One screamer, but he has a perfect stance. Y'all had this boy crawling. He didn't crawl to David. Y'all preached it wrong. He walked in and then fell on his face. That's why some folk don't like you. Because they know you're going through hell, but you ain't crawling. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. You ain't coming in like a dog with his tail between his legs. Can you help me? You're coming in asking for help, but still in your stance. And that is, if you don't help me, God bless you. You're going to wish you did later because I came to you first, right? It's what? You. No, 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 no. You don't have to help me. But remember, I came to you first. Do you know how hard it is to stand in an awkward position? Nothing, I'm about to bring it in closely, will never ever 
be the same again? He's lame. But he's on his feet. Let me say it like this and see if 34 will get overexcited because you didn't yet and that's why you ain't blessed because your posture has not matched your need. But catch this. You're broke but still on your feet. Unemployed but still on your feet. And you know when you got a good stance when folks see you and get jealous for no reason at all. They want you to do bad and look like it. I'm exhausted all the time he gave me what do we do when we when we have to admit to ourselves in honesty for 30 folk who will talk that I want to change but I can't do it on my own God says the only way then I can change you I hope one person jumps with me is I got to let you sit at a different table Here's where I would hoop, but I'm going to leave helping. Catch this. Here goes David finding Mephibosheth at a time when his walk, his handicap. Come on, talk to me. No, no. If you're standing, talk louder. His handicap is supposed to disqualify him from sitting at a king's table. Because your walk must match the king. You got to have a certain posture, certain name, certain dress code. Here is David breaking rules for Mephibosheth because he remembers God broke rules for him. Yeah. Uh oh, y'all right. Who y'all gonna break some rules for when you get blessed, right? You gotta go find somebody that folk count it out and be like, listen, I'm the king, but on the down low, I used to be you. Underneath this designer suit is another dude with an earring. Underneath this guy with the mic jerking it in the loud wheel are fingers that used to hold weed. See that man up there dancing for God? He the one in the club that used to put it down underneath. And then your testimony has to be, and if he did it for me, Oh, y'all don't want to talk. See, some of you want to bless your friends. I'm challenging you to find somebody that need to be blessed. About to bring it in, Reverend. This is how I do it. The king. No, no, no. The king has to come up with a strategy. So the strategy is, and maybe you high five me. I'm going to use who know you got a problem. Threaten them never to tell it. And tell them, get you to the table on time. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me say it again because y'all dropped the, the ball. I'm gonna use the folk who know everything negative about you, but I'm gonna threaten them. If you tell it, I'm gonna kill you. And I need you to do me one more thing. What now, Lord? Get them to the table early. For what now, Lord? For one screamer, I can't find it. Because I need them to sit at the part of the table where the cloth is long. Oh, oh, hold on right now. I need to make sure that they're where their handicap is covered. And even if it is true, nobody going to ever find out. Because if you lift the cloth, you don't have table manners. And that's going to make me have to kill you myself. The cloth is covering the handicap. Which that means for three folk that's happy with a loud mouth. I'll put a scripture to it and if you like this scripture you better dance because some of you don't qualify for this money you're about to get in houses and clothes and businesses if it compares to the sin you've done that you've not paid for yet. 
But at least catch this, when God brings you a guest to his table, the cloth is long enough to uh, make this scripture come to light. And I'm hoping 30 folk jump at least three seconds. Love covers a multitude. Y'all ain't... This table ain't for perfect folk. This table is for messed up folk who still got a heart to live right. And they know they can't deliver themselves. And they also have not been treated right because they've not been able to tell their story. And that is I wasn't born like this. I was dragged into it. Who dragged you into it? I don't know. They left me a long time ago. Give me my three minutes. Look at me. Because some of you look real demonic right now. Because you don't want certain people to make it. Because you ain't happy with where you are. But what you should do for the real scream is grow up and tell, and tell God bless whoever it is. Because maybe when I get there, I'll send you an invitation. To hold somebody back, maybe holding yourself back. I don't know why some of you are standing looking so mean. Watch, I'm about to close it. Ready? Love covers. So I wrote on the paper and I'm done. I wrote, why would you bring Mephibosheth to the table? The Lord says, all he needs to really sit at the table to make folk forget what his handicap is, is some good manners. He says, when you're at a person's table, y'all gonna hear me, people are supposed to pay attention to your conversation, not your legs. And God said, I'm about to prophetically sit you down with people that heard all this negative stuff about you. But I'm going to make your conversation so tough that they're going to be like, I don't even care. You want it? You got it. God says, I'm about to let your manners be stronger than your method. Y'all ain't tough. It is no longer about your walk. It's about how you act when you sit among the elite. About to close it. I, th I know y'all thought I was going to yell, but I'm going to save that till Tuesday. God is about, look at me now, to change your company. All you got to do to be successful in March for the 100 Screamers is make sure you get there early. And slip them legs under the table. I got a prophetic topic for 50 folk who will jump like this and dance with me without music for five seconds. And that's this. God said, I'm going to have to do it for you like people who illegal do things, but you better not open your mouth. He said, I'm going to let you catch up with all your haters because I'm going to give you a blessing under the table. Y'all need to move. When you're paid under the table, ain't no record. Y'all ain't talk. Ain't no proof. Ain't no check. Give me cash. It's still a dance, even if my feet are lame. God says between now and mid-March, work on your manners. Oh, the devil is alive. Because you ask, how would he have really closed this if he was hooping and preaching? Let me say this, and then I want 10 folk to take a step to the left, right, or out, and make it known that you're the one who God's about to bless. Pastor Jamal, maybe you preach this because you don't preach the whole Bible. Psalm 23, and thou preparest a table for me in the Come on, all y'all. That's all I want to say. I want to say this, if I was going to hoop it, which I'm not. I want to say this, because I want to stay focused and do my assignment. I want to say this, and hope that 20 or 30 people would take a step right or left or out front, because some already made way. And that's this. It does not say, I hope he screams at me, because he don't scream more. He holds it in and gets deep now, because he's seasoned. No, he's more seasoned. It does not say God prepares the meal, just the table. 
he has no intention on feeding your enemies. Y'all ain't talking. Oh, y'all mighty quiet. Your enemies, because they didn't invite you to their table, about to starve to death. God didn't prepare no meal. He said, I only prepare the table. And those who properly can prepare tables, catch this and jump. People who know how to prepare tables, practice etiquette. People who sit there should practice manners. Y'all need to, it's called table man. He's about to sit you where you must know what everything means. What to use, how to use it, how to turn it, how to place it. Can bring your ghettoism to this next level. You got to come there with a banker without a degree. Don't let them know where your walk is from. Look at me, because we're closed. God did not prepare no meal. He prepared the table. The table, look at me, is prepared before you come out of the valley. Your only business is get out of Lodi Bar. Because there's something waiting on you. You got a seat. Look at me, Hasha. Thank you, sir. You were here the other day there with a sweater, praising God on Sunday. And the Lord told me he was giving you a new house, but I never told you. You were in third row right there. It's okay. Third row with a striped sweater on right over there. Listen. If, shh, if God is preparing a table, the table is not for your enemies to come and for you to treat them right at this time. The reason why there's no food at this table, I want a lady to scream in the man, is because how can enemies eat when you succeed? They're going to lose their appetite. Who is that? And what's going to really kill them if you jump high is they're going to be upset because they're going to tell God they still walk like they used to walk. How they get here? And God said, because I know their walk was not something they did. Circumstances dragged them into this. Your drop became a drag. And God says, the devil's been dragging you along for the last five years. He said, and the only way for me to stop him from killing you is to send you an invitation. Pull up a chair. You're about to sit, everyone standing. You're about to sit with people in high places. High places. That's why I didn't mind when we saw each other at the airport. I didn't know you weren't going to be here, but I know you trust me. I understood your office tried to make me feel sweet. He wouldn't leave you here if he didn't trust you. I was like, no, he didn't plan on being here. They put me in your office. He wouldn't let nobody in his office. I was like, but the barber ain't here. <laughs> Listen, the reason why I was glad to do it, I hope somebody here screams for him, is while I was here helping folk get out of Lodi Bar, you were pulling up a chair in Selma. <laughs> it's your time to pull up a chair. And who you invite to preach in your absence should know they're next. Y'all ain't done. It's the invitation. You have in the kingdom, I have it, Bishop Martin has it, Robinson has it, Gay has it. 50 of y'all have it who would praise. No matter what you've done wrong, no matter what folk, folk find out, the only reason why you are still here going higher, I might preach this on Tuesday, is the Lord said, tell them tonight, those who praise me, you've got permanent job security. Now listen. I'm going to eat like this every day. I'm going to dress like I want to dress every day.
You're holding the hand of a person who's never touched a wealthy person before. Until now. And if they don't want to touch you, cross them off your guest list. If you can't hold my hands when it's empty, don't reach for them when they're full. You can't tell it. Pop, your mom and dad can't tell it. I can't tell it. I don't know how you got where you are. If the stories are true about GED and dropping out and now you Ivy League and now you're talking to the Jacksons and Obamas and sitting at tables and throwing lunches at the Renaissance. Oprah couldn't get a room for 4000 a night and you at the hotel. Now I know because the manager's my cousin. My manager said we didn't give Oprah a room for $4,000 a night. Because some of us are getting places where our money cannot take us. But he said, I'm sending you there because you went through enough hell to have manners. Even if they don't like you, you know how to be proper. God bless you. How are you? It's about manners. I'm going to speak well of you even though you ain't speaking well of me. Because about time you get to the table that God's prepared... You're going to find out who his guest is. Everything, and we're done, is right where God wants it to be. And I'm sorry I have not been this hollering preacher that y'all used to, but if y'all come back one more night, I might bless you beyond your imagination. You got to have manners. You got to cancel your regular scheduled appointments and be like, hey, be mad for a minute. Because I've got RSVP seating for mid-March. And if you're going to get mad, leave me now. Because I won't need no crutches after the beginning of April. Mephibosheth, the Bible says in verse 13. Can anybody read it? Can you show it? Then we're going to give within two minutes. Can y'all show it like y'all doing this big church like they do at Lakewood? Because you know, because you know, I got to talk to you because when you preach and I watch you on streaming early service, all your scriptures be under the screen. And when I cut you on early morning, you didn't have no scriptures under the screen. What you do? You called them and said, now. Yeah. <laughs> See, these are folk that grew up with them, so y'all ain't catching it, but it's okay. Listen, this blows my mind. It said he was lame on his feet. I don't care what you say or see about me. At least tell the final story. He on his feet. If what they went through didn't stop where they went, give them their due credit. And stop trying to find something wrong. They're on their feet. Lame and all. Broke, bad credit. After March 17th, you won't be stopped. That's because for one screamer, you're no longer God's guests. You're his sons and daughters. Tomorrow is going to be an unusual sermon. What I'll be preaching for the first hundred screamers who will catch it, even preachers. Because we preach don't mean that we're wealthy. Even if the bills are paid, don't mean we've got enough for our children's children. And I'm almost there. I got enough for my children, but not for my children's children. I'm working on that now. But I want to say this to 100 people who will catch it. I will prove to you that after May 17th, money will start popping up out of nowhere. Money you didn't even work for. Actual money. I got a scripture in the Bible that says these exact words, and I'm hoping 100 start jumping. The money is in the bag.